We work in a cluttered and distracted world, which is why Axios HQ is helping teams big and small format clearer, more efficient internal updates. Colleagues get the news they need and nothing more to stay productive at work. Axios HQ, write less, say more. Hi, I'm Jim Vandehei. I'm the, one of the co-founders and CEO of Axios. I'm thrilled today to introduce you to our newest product, Axios HQ, uh, which is a new product that allows you, the user, to be able to communicate the way that we communicate with our readers. And the origin of HQ is one of my favorite stories as an entrepreneur and as a CEO. About two years ago, you know, maybe 10 or 12 different companies called us and they said, listen, our executives, our CEO, they're all reading your products and they're not reading other stuff. Is there any way that you could teach us to communicate the way you communicate? And initially we said, nah, that's not the business uh, that we're in. But as 10 or 12 became 20 or 30, we said, aha, there must be a huge problem out there, even at the most sophisticated companies with communicating, communicating with hierarchy, communicating with simplicity, uh, basically doing what we do with smart brevity, which is help people understand what's new, why does it matter with clarity and hierarchy. And that's what HQ does. We built a technology around it. We built a teaching team around it. And over the next 30 minutes, you're going to see how it works. It's You're going to see where it came from. And hopefully you'll see how it could revolutionize how you communicate. It's now my pleasure uh, to bring you the main event, a conversation with Lucy Urich, who is the Global Head of Reputation at HSBC. Lucy, thank you for joining us. Uh, and it'd be awesome if you could explain to everybody sort of like the fundamental communications pro problem or obstacle that you were facing. Hi, Jim. Really nice to see you. Um, and yeah, really happy to do that for you. So a little bit of background. Um, I'm Lucy. I run the reputation team, as you said, at HSBC. Um, what that means is um, me and my team are tasked with telling the bank story to all of our key audiences and hopefully doing that in a really consistent and compelling way. And one of the things that we're really focused on at the moment is how do we help the huge population of leaders that we have right across the globe to advocate for that story and to be a part of it themselves. Now, the, the challenge that we're facing is that actually our senior managers, so our most senior and influential um, individuals are actually the least satisfied at the moment with what we're serving up to them. In fact, only 60% of them at the moment actually rate our internal communications as effective. That's a problem um, and we need to do better. And one of the things that we knew we needed to do was work out how to serve up for them information in a way that felt really worthy of their time. So um, that was the challenge that we were facing. Um, and that was the challenge that we set out when we first met Axios. And how did that happen? How did you come to learn about Smart Brevity? How did you come to talk to our team and figure out, ah, oh, this might actually help me help our team better, uh, better serve our leadership, better serve the company by bringing some hierarchy and consistency to communications? Well, for me, I'll confess it was actually a little bit of luck, Jim. Um, so I was setting out on a new brief about a year ago, building a new team. Um, and one of the things that I like to do when I start a new job is to look at those that are doing things really, really well, um, companies and people that I admire, and to try and speak to them to see what it is that they're doing to innovate and make things better um, in the world of communications. And it was through one of those communications um, conversations with somebody that I admired that the name Axios came up. Um, I'd known Axios as a consumer, but never knew about your offering in terms of working with um, communications teams and functions. So I found out a little bit more about that through a peer um, at another really large British based corporate. Um, they had everything good to say about Axios and their experience. So we started to explore what our partnership could look like. And how, what has that looked like? Like what has worked like how, and what differences it made for you as a communicator or ultimately the most important client, the company, like what, what difference does it make for the company? So we're, I would say quite near the beginning of our journey, 
But since October last year, we've been piloting in partnership with Axios, a new newsletter product um, for our most senior managers at HSBC. And we've been having really fantastic early success. So what we've been hearing from the people who are receiving that product from us is that there's a really consistent and distinctive style to what we're providing. The information is concise. It's served up exactly how they, they want to kind of gobble it up every morning when they're receiving it. Um, and that it's really relevant to them. And we're finding that it's enabling us to actually broaden the reach of some of our really key messages, whether those are from our chief executive or um, others across the bank. We're also finding that it's enabling us to get to our senior managers our most important positions on some of the hot issues of the day, whether those are external to the bank or internal. So early signs are really good. Um, and actually, as a result of that early success, in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to be rolling out the product to 10,000 managers, four days a week, um, right across the organization. It's interesting because I'm a user of it. Like, that is how I communicate. And now it's how we mandate that all of our executives communicate. So on Friday or on the weekends, I'm getting multiple newsletters done in the Axios HQ uh, style. It just gives me, like, such uh, visibility. Uh, one of the things that we learned on the journalism side, and I wonder how this plays out for you, is uh, getting people to write tight is actually hard, right? We had this great saying early on uh, that brevity is confidence, length is fear. That people just kind of vomit up a bunch of words to hide that they might not know exactly what it is they want to say. How hard has it been uh, in this short period of time to start to teach other people to embrace smart brevity, uh, which might seem intuitive, but is difficult for some people? It's a great question, Jim. I think as communicators, if we're honest, at the beginning of this program, we were a little bit skeptical and thought that, hey, we're, we're good at this stuff. We're good at serving up information in a way that people want to read and digest it. And we're good at writing. We know what we're doing here. We don't need somebody to come and tell us how to be more effective and how to write with greater impact. And I think part of the, the process for us has been leaving that at the door listening with a really open mind to the art of the possible and starting to experiment with that, that open mind. Um, so it has been difficult, partly because of our own pride and ego, actually. But I think the early results that we're seeing have only increased people's appetite to do more in smart brevity and do it even better. So we've got the bug. Um, as I said, it was early days, but we're already seeing other parts of the organization come to us and say, hey, can we get access to this platform that we're hearing about? What is this smart brevity thing? Can you train me? And that for me is the proof of the pudding. It's interesting how addictive it is. I think I know the company that you heard it from uh, uh, in uh, that's another international company because we heard from so many of their board members because they were getting it uh, as well. And your uh, your staff shouldn't feel bad about it. I would say our reporters when we hire them, like the number of the reporters who really can't write that well and that really have to be taught and sort of have a, have a machine or have a human assistance and just writing tighter and like, what's new? Why does it matter? Make it efficient. And because what you see is like instantly you just, you save time. You have, you have everybody on the same page and it's written with a, with a sort of clarity. For you, as you think long-term, what will be big success? Like what you would hope to see a year from now, what kind of difference in your organization? And then in terms of people who are on all about ROI, like what is the return on that investment? Like what do you get if you're successful with what you're trying to do on the communication side? Two really big questions wrapped up in there, I think, Jim. So what, what would I like to see? Ideally, I want this product, our newsletter product, to be a habit for people. I want it to be something that they are looking for every morning in their inbox because they know it's going to give them what they need to feel set up for the day, to feel informed, and to feel like they can go out and really um, powerfully tell the story of what's happening within the bank and actually outside of the bank. Um, so that's kind of the key thing. It's that a habit has formed, that people rely on it, um, that it is the source the true source of information across HSBC. And then, you know, what would I like to happen from there? 
Well, I think the possibilities for this are really quite endless. I would love to see us start speaking to each other in this way as well. I would love to see our meeting times come down, you know, our board papers written in a more concise way. Um, I would love to see the amount of communications products that we have on the shelf reduced because we need fewer, um, because we've got better, higher impact products and people are really using them. Right now, every company in the world is facing the same problem. Their teams are getting buried in more information than ever, and there's never enough time to get through it. Only 5% of staff make it past the first few lines of any internal update. So when crucial details are truly needed, you know, to spur growth or make critical decisions, they're often 10 days back in an overlooked email or lost in a long winding thread. In short, the team stalled on progress and you're left to answer all the same questions again. Axios can put an end to lost time. We know that clear, efficient communication Communication is the lifeblood of any company, and we've nailed the most effective way to break through the noise and keep readers hooked in a tool we call Axios HQ. It is now my pleasure to bring you a conversation with Lindsay Sullivan, who's the Vice President of Business Development at HQ, and Yolanda Brignoni, who is our Vice President of Communications. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Deb. It's great to be here. Uh, Yolanda, your job is to be our communicator, uh, the person who communicates to the world on behalf of Axios. Before you were with us, you've been a communicator uh, for many companies uh, in the private sector. What's changed? What is like the hardest new thing about being a communicator? Well, it's, it's really information overload. There's so much information coming at people, um, not only in how people take in information. So they're trying to figure out what's important, what they can tune in, what they can tune out. But also as a communicator, it's difficult to try to figure out how to distill all the information that's coming into one coherent, cohesive message. It's also difficult when you're communicating across a large organization like I have, and you're trying to collaborate on like one document or one tool, and you wanna make sure that it has a really unified voice. Is it getting harder? It seems like one of the reasons we started Axios is it feels like it's getting harder for everyone to get information. As a communicator, is it getting harder? It is, it is. I mean, it's always difficult to really get people to focus in on what's important, but especially right now with COVID and everything that's going on, people feel so disconnected and you can't have those sort of hallway conversations that used to populate so much of my day. Um, you really have to rely on your communications tools and what's out there to really get your message out. Um, one of my frustrations, having been an editor for, for much of my life, is just getting people to write sharply, uh, to basically uh, to say more by writing less. How hard is that for you, for your team, for people in your profession? It's very hard. Uh, you have a lot of information. And particularly right now, you just have a lot of information that you're really trying to distill. And you want to write it clearly and distinctly and with clarity. And it can be very challenging. And that's one of the really great things about HQ is that it really is designed for a communicator in mind. And it allows you to very succinctly put your thoughts in a very clear framework, and it gives you the tools to stay on track. Uh, Lindsay, your job in running the business side of, of HQ is to work with customers, to be able to help them understand uh, the problem that we can help solve. Explain that. Like, what, what is the problem that you believe HQ solves better than anything else in the marketplace? Yeah. Our mission through HQ is to help organizations to create their own clear, smart, and efficient communications for their unique audience of busy professionals, just like we do for our unique Axios audience. And give me some examples. Like, where has it worked? We've had it in beta for some time. Uh, we've, you know, we've we've worked with big companies. We've worked with small ones. Give a couple of examples of like what works. Sure. Well, across 2020, as, as you know, we had an extensive beta program where we partnered with hundreds of organizations to utilize and dig into the HQ platform. And the results were really impressive. We saw organizations double, and in some cases, even triple their open rates for internal communications. 
Organizations shared with us that they saw greater alignment, productivity, and even an increase in employee engagement. And what's different? I guess is there's tons of communications tools out there. How do you see HQ differing from other products that people might use to communicate internal? Yeah, it's all about the content creation. So as you both know, our experience and expertise at Axios is in creating essential news and content and information. And so through HQ, we want to empower our partners and clients in the exact same way to empower them to create their own essential content for their unique audiences. There are a lot of organizations out there that focus on the technical delivery or distribution of content or updates. We do that too through HQ, but our primary focus, and personally, I think the true secret sauce here is the ability in the tool we've built in the Smart Brevity Framework. So we are able to help communicators to focus on creating updates and newsletters and content that's concise, visually appealing, and easy to consume. We really help them focus on distilling down to exactly what's new and why it matters, ultimately helping them to write less and say more. Uh, I eat the food that we make. I use HQ. I've found uh, I've been a, a leader of now two different companies. I feel like our ability to communicate uh, is exponentially sharper and better than uh, than other companies I've worked at. HQ is a big uh, reason. Uh, Yolanda, you're relatively new to the company. You're relatively new uh, to HQ. What, how has it made the biggest difference for you? I think what's really great about HQ is that it's so clean, it's intuitive, it's really easy to use. Um, one of the things, it helps you really organize your thoughts. It helps you prioritize your messaging so you're really able to focus on what matters. Um, one of the other really great things about HQ is that it helps you track open rates, which is incredible because it's if you have a message that no one's reading, then how effective is it? And it delivers an end product that is concise, that's visually appealing and elegant. Yeah. And if I could chime in. Please. Oh, sorry. I was just going to chime in and say, you know, from my perspective, um, it's been really great to see how organizations of all different shapes and sizes can effectively utilize the HQ tool truly from organizations with less than 10 employees, all the way up to organizations with hundreds of thousands of employees, there is a use case and value that we're able to provide in each of those circumstances. For smaller organizations with limited communications team and even no communications team at all, HQ really serves as a force multiplier for their team. For larger organizations that may have more robust infrastructure in place when it comes to communications, as Yolanda alluded to, this helps to unify the message. Larger organizations are sending out a variety of different newsletters and communications and updates. So they often have different writers for each of those. And so HQ really helps to unify that voice. It's also a really great collaboration tool where multiple writers and communicators can work together in the HQ platform in real time to produce a robust update, newsletter, or piece of communication. Playing off that, Lindsay, like the most precious asset that all of us have now, the most strained asset is our time. How does it save you time? Because I feel like whenever, that's what we try to do on the journalism side. Like I wanna make you smarter, faster by giving you really good content but doing it much quicker. And a lot of people who came to us early on wanting to do HQ said, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could get better, more information packed into a smaller space. How does HQ help save time? I think the best way to answer that question, Jim, is to give you a real life example. So let's say there's an organization with 1,500 employees and that organization sends out a weekly all hands or all staff email. If we were to work with them through the HQ tool across the course of a year, we can actually help save them by shaving off 65,000 65, words off of those internal weekly updates across the course of that year. That equates to 8,000 hours, 8,000 hours of time saved that staff and readers can spend on other projects and priorities, ultimately saving the organization $400,000 in time saved and productivity. So the return on investment from a time and productivity standpoint is significant. 
Uh, thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, uh, Yolanda. You can tell, like, the reason there's so much passion by all of us about the product is we do, we use it, right? Like the, the alignment that we've had at Axios, I think, might be the biggest success that we've had as a company. Uh, one of the things we pride ourselves in is we try to be very straight shooters uh, with people. We try to deliver what we say we're going to deliver. We try to be very grateful uh, when people do uh, work with us because we know people uh, have options. I think you will find at the very least uh, you'll get a great education in what we have learned on the journalism side and what other companies have learned uh, about what does it take to break through when everyone's mind is so clogged and so frazzled uh, with information. There's just a beauty to smart brevity. We think it works in almost every setting. I think it definitely works in a business organizational setting. If you'd like to see a demo or you want to sign up, please visit us at Axios HQ. Dot com. That's A-X-I-O-S-H-Q dot com. Thank you very much.